how you can make some clocks in PowerPoint going at different speeds. These are very simple ones. I'm going to show you how to make a slightly more complicated one where you can put the numbers on. How to get the rotation correct? Well, the first thing we need in our design is a circle. So let's start with a circle and hold down the shift key so that we keep the circle consistent. If you don't hold the shift key, this can very easily become an odd shape. Now, if this was just a normal clock, it, um, or a simple clock, I wouldn't have much more to do, believe it or not. But we're going to make a more complicated one. So I'm now going to insert a line from the center point across to there. And we're then going to center that. So back to shape format, a line, and I can even remember, is it the middle or the center? A line center and a line middle. Well, now we know we've got a perfectly good horizontal line. Now we need one for vertical, so we can just copy that. Control C, Control V. Any wondering why I've got these grids on? I sometimes find them helpful. It's just an option under the View tab. You can turn it on and off. But while um, developing PowerPoint, I sometimes find these squares help you get your sizes right. Right, so we've done that. So I'm going to just hold the Shift button down and flip it manually uh, rather than doing a line, and we'll get that one again let's do the same we'll click the outside circle and we will click that one and we'll go back to shape development and we will align the center and we'll align the middle right and now we'll hit the save button in case we have to get back to this stage now we want this to do clock face so what we're going to have to do is make a few copies of that line uh, one Let's move a copy of the line out. How many will I need? One, two, three, four. I think just four. Control C, Control V, 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 V. Maybe more. And um, we'll go to the first line. We'll go to Shape Format. We will then do Rotate. Don't pick one of the ready-made ones. We'll go to More Rotation Options, and there we want 30 degrees. The next one we will want at 60 degrees. We've already got a 90, so the next one would be 120 degrees. And the next one, I think, plus that would be 120 plus 150 degrees. I hope I've got them all right now. Let's have a look. So we think I think I've gone through all the degrees as we need. I may have, oh, we don't want the straight line anymore. No, I must be missing one. Let's see what we've got. Um, so we'll highlight them all. We'll go back to our shape format again. We will go to align our middle and align the center. So we will highlight them all. And then we will go and change the end arrow size to large, the begin arrow size to large, the begin arrow type to a ball and the end arrow type to a ball. And there we go. Now we can go and group that in the interim. Control G. And we can put that one back in the center. There we go. So I think you can agree that's given us a clock face. You can either put numbers on there or you can do uh, relatively what you like. Next, we'll need the large hand and small hand. Now you can design these fancy, but for the speed of the video, I'm just going to grab some basic shapes. So there we go, we'll make that the big hand and let's stick it there. Zoom in. We need to get obviously the bottom section slap bang on the line. That one we better give it some color. I'm gonna overdo it for the purpose of the video. So we'll go for a solid fill and we'll make the second hand red. I'm going to now control C, control V. I'm going to narrow it. Oh, sorry we can make now we can make the bigger hand actually i've changed my mind let's make the big hand obviously needs to be shorter so we should maybe make the second hand half that size even narrower right let's just check that we're happy with that so we'll put him back on the center line for now and we'll put our big hand over the top he obviously should be let's keep him simple we'll go for black so the big hand can just be a nice black hand. There we are. Let's zoom out again. Right, there we are. We've got our two hands for our clocks. And I'm actually, for the purpose of the video, going to use this as something else. Right, now we'd like it to animate. Now, 
the animation we use when we go to insert animation so let's go to animation add animation and we're going to use one called spin but as you can see ouch that does not do what I would like it to do it just spins on its own axis we need it to spin within the clock surface so let me delete this in the meantime no yeah before you do the following decide on the size of your clock because once the animations in resizing this is difficult meaning if I select everything and try to resize this now you can see things are going to go all over the place so let's undo that with a control Z so let's decide on the size of the clock by making it into a group control G and now we can get the size so get your size that you're going to be using oh I didn't hit the control key control Z so get the size of the clock you want again hold the shift key down to lock the aspect and let's say that's going to be the size of our clock and once we're happy we can then group and ungroup right, now I'm going to create two more copies of this clock there's probably a quicker way of doing it but this one's probably going to be the easiest we want we will need to make one version for the uh, big hand and one version for the small hand now what we don't need obviously are the lines they're already on our original clock so let's get rid of those and I suppose I should have copied that first in hindsight and this video will be or this uh, combination will be for the small hand and this will be for the big hand now we create a group we can group that one so it's control G and we want to group that one control G that's it now we have now when we click now when we click on this animation and we go back to spin you will see that it's actually doing exactly what we want because we've grouped it with a circle if I click on this one and add some spin down to the yellow and we add some spin you can see I've got control now over the big hand and then you can now mess around with your timing so I'm not going to do real timing let's just say the duration of this the big hand let's keep it simple the duration of the big hand will make that 10 doesn't really matter you can work out the, your own timing so we'll play that one and then we'll play that one now all we've got to do is add these images back on the clock so I'm going to delete the arms from our original clock and I'm going to make sure that is a group control G or do it manually and I'm going to make this one slightly bigger meaning this is the outside now of the clock let's make that uh, 10 seconds to do a full circle so that we have the, the big hand running slower than the small hand then quite simply there's only one step needed we need to give this one a solid fill so I should have done this really well you can double click you can double click so if I click once it's going to do both if I double click it's just going to do the outside ring I should have actually done the solid fill before we grouped it but we'll do it with the double click so you can see there's two squares now selected so we'll go for a solid fill of black uh, of white now we should have a solid fill on that object we do now we can just bring that object back and put it on of our clock there's our big hand and then we can bring the other and we can overlay that and there we go and we can put that on our clock too let's go to the view get rid of the grid lines and let's actually run the video oh we should have run one before the other there's the Right, there's the small hand and there's the big hand so last fixing up obviously required is this animation here when we go back to animation must be on pre with previous and likewise for the large hand that should also be with previous insert a circle give it some interesting make it maybe make it look a bit 3d ish so we'll just grab one of these cheat I'll take a one there with a bit of shadow on it there we go and obviously putting that dead center again you could use I'm just doing it by eye you could go and use the 
the alignment tools. And there we go. Uh, we have now a, should be a fully animated clock. Oops, good point. One more thing missing. We click on the second hand. We go back to animation. Let's view the animation pane. We need to open up the animation, go to timing, and on timing, its duration is, its repeat is keep going until either the next click or the next slide. In this case, I'll choose the next slide, and then I need to do likewise, so that will keep running, and like, then I need to do likewise for the big hand. There we go. And we'll go back down, we'll go timing, and timing will be repeat, and we'll say until the next slide. And let's run the presentation. There we go, we have a clock permanently running now in your PowerPoint presentation.